Mm. Look at the steam coming off that. Mm, it's good. Good sipping. Hey, fellas. Welcome back for part two of the Tamiya's 148 scale F16 build. In this exciting episode, I show you how I build the, uh, the tube contraption type thing where I'm going to stick my rod in, into the back of the plane for... <laughs> in the back of the plane for the stand. And then... Um, and, and then the rest of it's, uh, I get it primed and painted, get the base coats on it, and uh, do a little bit of, like, pre-weather. I, sh I shouldn't say pre-weathering, it's actual weathering. You, you can start the weathering process at any time. In fact, um, you could say that you start the weathering process if you do pre-shading or, like, black basing. So that's all part of the weathering process. Anyway, i uh, show you how I do all that. And uh, it's a rather long video, so I'll keep this short, and let's get on with it. All right, fellas, uh, let's run through how I'm going to attach this to the base. So first, what I want to do is I want to come up with a plan. And this is the idea that I've kind of drawn out in my head. I'm going to have this at a little bit steeper of an angle where the nose is pointed up a little bit more. But um, this is the basic idea. I've got my wooden base here and I've got an acrylic rod that I'm going to bend to shape and kind of like a curved pattern, which means I'm going to have to have to drill a hole for the acrylic rod into the base at an angle, which isn't that big of a deal. I've got a uh, drill press that I can set up and do that. Um, and I'm gonna have the acrylic rod running through the exhaust. Now I could actually have an acrylic rod running through the back and bottom of the plane, like right here, somewhere around right here, and have it set up there. But I really like uh, when I can, just to run it through the exhaust, I think it's a little less obtrusive and looks a little bit better. Um, so I've got my plan, I've got my wooden base, I've got one just about, about uh, three quarters of the size of the plane, which will be plenty. Uh, I'm going to do some artwork on here. I haven't quite decided, maybe a flag that's kind of torn, I think would look kind of cool with this F-16 coming at you. Um, the, this kit has a really nice long uh, cavity back here. So I'm gonna have a lot of room to work with. It won't show up because I don't have good lighting uh, the way the camera's set up. But there's a long cavity. The actual intakes end right about here. So I've got like this whole area to work with. Uh, another good thing about this kit for doing it this way is I've got this uh, part of the exhaust that's its own little separate piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to trim off this right here so I can insert a tube. Now I've got for my acrylic rod, I've got a quarter inch acrylic rod and I went up to Casey's General Store, the gas station we have here in the United States. Uh, I went up there and I got a straw and it fits this quarter inch acrylic rod perfectly. I'm not going to have to put any tape. It's actually somewhat tight. So uh, I may have to sand some of this and just kind of shave this down just a bit, but I think it'll be okay. So it fits in there perfectly. So I'm going to use this as my receptacle inside of the actual plane and inside of here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this off and I'm going to insert this tube in here and glue it in. And I'll probably take some plastic card and cut into a circular shape to give some more support right here. So when I put it in here, I can just slide the tube in there, glue it in and then put my exhaust nozzle on, and then my acrylic rod's gonna go right through the back, just like so. All right? All right, so what I've done now is I've cut out a, a circle of plastic card, and as you can see, I've deepened the hole so my straw can go through. Now this is what's gonna hold everything together. So my plastic card's gonna fit nice and snugly right in to Ah. Once I use a little bit of glue, I can glue it in there and it'll stay. It's going to fit snugly into the exhaust can here. I've got it kind of tight, which is what I want. Once I add a little bit of, of uh, Tamiya Extra Thin, it'll snug right down in there. Okay, so I'm going to stick this through here. All right, now I'm going to grab my plane. And I'm 
gonna go ahead and stick this uh, exhaust can in here where it's supposed to be. It fits in there just like that. Okay, I'm gonna figure out how much room I've got until the end. Because I want it, I want this to go as deep as possible. So I can give myself enough room. And I'm gonna mark it. Okay. So right about there. So I'm going to mark this. The straw right there. Okay. And I can go ahead and mark it down here as well. All right, now what I'm gonna do is take a piece of tape. Oh, let's see. Ah, man, I had a train wreck this morning. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, put a piece of tape right here. And none of this is going to be seen, by the way. A little bit more. None of this is going to be seen. All right. So then I can stick this right here. And then I can go ahead and add some... Um, five minute epoxy inside of there. So let's go ahead and do that so we can get this started. All right, fellas, so the glue or the uh, five minute epoxy is dried and I went ahead and trimmed off the excess of my tube. And I also, it was a little tight once I got everything glued in there. So I sanded the area that's gonna be stuck inside of the tube. So it fits in there. Still a little snug, I'm gonna have to do some more sanding. But uh, when, you, when you do something like this, you kinda have to make adjustments as you go. 
I could probably put a little bit of lubricant in there as well, but I don't want it to where it, the, the plane like, you know, can move around too much on its own. All right, so I've got this done and I'm gonna go ahead and glue this in here. I will paint this black when I'm finished. So this fits in here just like so. We'll, so we'll go ahead and glue it. Glue this down. Now I can also use this, since I've got it glued down, I can use it to, uh, when I paint my model, I can stick an acrylic rod in there and hold it so I don't have to be handling it too much. I want to get this in here nice and glued down. You can see I've got tape around here because I've, I went ahead and painted this uh, area that's metallic and I've I painted that and then covered it with a, uh, a flat coat to protect it and then I've taped it so that way um, I don't have to try to get in there after I paint the plane the gray color get in there and try to mask everything off to paint that metallic I've already got that part taken care of so I don't want to get any of this glue in there all right so we should be good to go then I can put the exhaust nozzle on there whenever I'm finished painting it and uh, should be good to go fellas all right, fellas, now I've got the base, I got the hole drilled, and I'll be ready to stain the side of it and then start painting the, the artwork on the base. Uh, I've got my acrylic rod, I cut it down a little bit, a couple inches off there, bent it, and then I did have to sand a little bit up here just so it would fit into the back of the plane a little bit easier. And it's nice and snug, but not too snug. And then it fits into the base just like so. So there we go. I think that's going to look really cool, uh, especially once I get the artwork down on the base. Now, um, this hole back here also serves double duty because I'll just take another acrylic rod and I can stick it in there. And now when I go to paint it, I can just paint the whole thing. I don't have to wait for any paint to dry before I handle it. I can just paint it all at one time and then I can like stick it down somewhere for it to dry. So that uh, that's also a, a added benefit of having this little setup here. So, all right, I'm going to, um, I gotta mask this area off on the inside of the intake and that's always a pain in the butt. So I'm gonna figure out what works best for that. And then we'll, um, we'll shoot some primer on it, see where my mistakes are, get those corrected, and then we'll start painting. So I've got it in primer and we'll go over this again. I know I've done this in several other videos, but we'll just go ahead and, and uh, run through it again for my newer viewers. My favorite primer is Mr. Finishing Servicer 1500, and it comes in black and gray, and I think there's a, a mahogany type color too, as well. Uh, this one, I decided to do it in gray just because it's a little bit easier to see some issues that uh, I knew I was gonna have. Um, and if I coat it in black, it's a little bit harder to see. I thin that out with Mr. Color Leveling Thinner, and it gives a nice smooth surface. Now, it does give a nice smooth surface if you, if you uh, thin it out properly. And, uh, and spray it properly. Um, however, there, I do like to go over it with some of these micro mesh sanding cloths. Now, they've, they come in, uh, I think, uh, they range in 3200 grit to 12,000 grit. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the 6,000 grit, and I'm just gonna go over it just in case there's some, like I think there might be some a few little somewhat rough spots. I mean, it's not bad. It's really, it's a really nice finish actually. But just in case there's some little things that um, I didn't catch or some, a few little rough spots, I'm just gonna take this 600 and just lightly go over it just so I can make sure that I have a nice smooth finish and I don't have any rough spots. Now you wanna be careful with things that are sticking up and 
I am using 6,000 grit, which is which is um, uh, not very coarse at all. So it's just going to smooth down the rough spots. Uh, but you do want to be careful when you go over these high spots that you don't rub the paint, rub the uh, the primer off. It is pretty sturdy primer. I've got about two coats on here, and especially along the 90 degree angles, I may have it may be a little more rough. This looks pretty good, but just in case, I'm going to just sand this these away. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to do most of this off camera, but just to give you an idea of my process here. And then I'll feel it nice and smooth. And again, I'm not really sanding much off. I'm just taking any rough spots out because I want the smoothest finish possible, okay? I'm gonna do the rest of it off camera. Now, as far as paint goes, um, what I found is the uh, two FS numbers that I'm gonna use are 36118 and 36270. Now, to me, it doesn't have these colors. You have to mix them. And I'm gonna leave a link in the description of the webpage that I use for my Timia mixes. It's got all the FS numbers, uh, or most of them, uh, the RAF numbers, the RLM colors, and all the mixes. That, uh, that are used with Tamiya paints. It's a really good link, I use it all the time. So I've already got these mixed up. Um, once, once I get this sanded down though, I am gonna come back with my, uh, let's see, Procon Boy 770. And this is a real fine airbrush. Uh, it's a 0.18 needle, I think. Yep, 0.18, is that 0.18? It says 018, but I think it's a 0.18 needle. So really small needle. And typically what I like to do is black base. And then uh, if, you, if you don't know what black basing is, I've got some other videos on it. But typically I like to black base, but I'm not gonna mess with that this time. I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna do some pre-shading. And I'm gonna take some of this black, I'm gonna thin it down real well, and then use my Procon Boy 770. And I'm gonna come in here and hit some panel lines. I'll probably also take some white paint and come in and highlight some areas with white. And then I can spray my colors down. So I will I will take some pictures. I may video some of it, um, but I'm gonna get that done after I sand it, and then we'll get ready to paint. All right, fellas, so I've got my pre-shading done. I've got uh, black along a lot of the panel lines, and then I took some white and then highlighted some areas and gave it a little bit of a mottled finish. Uh, so there we go. You can see I've already painted the nose. And it's gonna be a lot easier to paint the nose and mask it off before I paint the plane. If I'd have painted the plane first and then uh, went ahead and tried to mask this area off, I've got a lot of stuff I need. I would need to deal with. And in my opinion, it's always easier when you're masking off a rounded surface like this to, to uh, mask off the area where it's getting bigger. And uh, so you can see I've already started masking that off using, my, using some Tamiya tape from that I cut with my Infinity cutting mat, which is invalu an invaluable tool. We'll get this out of the way. Um, so now, now I'm at a decision point. I've got two colors. The lighter color is going to be along the bottom, along the front here, and along the tail fin. And then I've got the 36118 that's going to be on the, the upper surface. So I need to decide which color I'm going to paint first. And I've decided I'm going to paint the 36118 first because it's going to be a lot easier to spray this down and then mask off the upper fuselage area rather than if I would paint the, the lighter color on the tail fin here, I'd have to mask this off and I'd have to deal with all these little protrusions and it's gonna be a lot more difficult to mask the lighter off um, than, than it would be to mask off the darker color. So I'm gonna get to um, spraying this. I will probably show you how I mix this up just to give a, a little refresher for some of the newer guys that are new to mixing Tamiya paints if you use Tamiya. And um, I'll get to spraying this. Okay, so I've got my paint here and I'm gonna go ahead and mix this in a, I usually just do this in my color cup. We'll go ahead and mix it out here so you can see. So I'm just adding some Mr. Color Leveling Thinner. And then I've, when I mix these colors, I usually add a little bit of thinner to them. So, you know, and to me, a paint, if it gets old, if it gets older, it, uh, it seems to thicken up. So you really never know what you're going to get. So I'm just going to do this by eye and I want it fairly thin, but I don't want it. 
I mean, I don't want to put a thousand coats on there, but I do want it pretty thin. Okay, that's going to be a little too thin. And a lot of times, I, I probably shouldn't do this, but <laughs> my leftover paint, after I mixed it, I'll just throw it back in the in the jar just so I'm not wasting because paint costs money. All right. Okay. All right. I think that's probably about where I want it. Okay. So I'm going to grab my airbrush and we'll paint a couple parts on camera, but I'll paint the rest of the plane off camera just because it's a lot easier for me. But you'll get the idea. Let me get my glove on. Alright, so I'm using my Procon 770. I've got some in my color cup. And I want to gradually build this color up. I don't want to, I don't want to just flood it because I don't want to cover up all my pre-shading. If I do cover up my pre-shading, it's okay. I can always come back. I'm gonna do some post-shading and do some other stuff anyway. And I'm just gonna gradually build this color up. Sure, I get the edges as well. And I do want a little bit more of a dramatic look with this plane than what I typically do. So I'm going to let a lot of that pre shading shine through. Now I'll let this dry a little bit. And then uh, I'll come back and I may, I may put some more on it. And like I said, I'm going to put layers of different of post shading on this as well. And I think I'm going to do the salt technique on this one too. I really like the way that looks. All right. Okay, I think I'm going to be happy with that. I'm going to go ahead and paint the rest of the plane, but you get the idea of what I'm doing here. And we will be back in a minute. All right, fellas, I got the base coats down. I did uh, lighten a couple of the panels over here. And uh, I don't know, I think it looks pretty good so far. But what I'm gonna do is do some, do uh, my salt technique. And if, if you watch my F-14 videos, my Top Gun Tomcat videos, you've seen me do this. Uh, I'm gonna use distilled water. You can use just regular water. I don't think it matters, but I just have distilled. And the key to this is dish soap. Okay, now this is gonna break up the water tension. Uh, okay, I don't want to get too much in there. I don't want to don't want to have a soapy mess, guys. I don't want a soapy mess. All right, let me get a brush. And what this is, if you're not familiar with the salt technique, what it is is <clears throat> you're just <clears throat> covering the surface with grains of salt and then spraying a lighter or darker shade of paint on the top. And then you can take remove the salt and you're left with a, a, a really nice weathered effect. So basically the grains of salt are masking the paint. And it will, uh, it looks, it looks cool in my opinion. So it looks like weathered paint. Okay, so I'm just gonna take this water and soap solution and wet down the area. The only thing I don't like about this is it does get kind of messy and it's hard to get the salt out of like little areas like these vents here. I mean, it, it, it can be done. It's just, it's, it's not the easiest thing to do. Now I put the, the uh, horizontal stabilizers on just for this technique. I'm, I don't want to leave them on there while I paint. And I ended up breaking one of the tabs off 
while I was doing it, so I had to replace the, the tab. I just uh, cut out a piece of plastic tubing or a plastic rod that was the same size and drilled a hole and it was just, nah. Not that big of a deal, but just another hassle. What happens when you start messing with stuff you're not supposed to be messing with. All right, okay. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my salt. It's just regular table salt. This is popcorn salt, but it's it doesn't matter. And I'm just gonna go over it. Put some on here. Put some on here. Okay. Now I'm gonna set this aside to dry. Just set this aside to dry, and when it's when it's uh, dry, I'll come back and we'll uh, we'll paint it. So the uh, the salt is dried. I'm gonna go ahead and mix up some paint. So I've got a real light gray. This is um, light ghost gray. It doesn't matter really what you use as long as it's a little bit lighter. If you want, you could go a little bit darker, but on this, I want to go a little bit lighter. I've just got some X28 thinner. You could use uh, isopropyl alcohol or uh, leveling thinner. Leveling thinner just takes a little longer to dry. So I've got some of that in my cup here and I'm gonna put a little bit in here. I want to mix a real thin mixture of it. I don't, I don't want this very thick at all. Okay, just like so. That's about as thin as I want it. I could even probably go just a little bit thinner. You just want to be careful because <clears throat> uh, you can go overboard really quick with this method. Uh, you can always touch it up and uh, put, put back the, uh, the darker color. But here is what it looks like when the salt's dried, okay? And I'll go ahead and bring everything over here so we can see it. I'm just going to pour this in my color cup. Alrighty. All right. And then we're just going to spray over top. And it's it's going to be it's going to be a little bit different cuz you're not going to be able to tell a difference while you spray. It even looks darker just because it's that salt has a tendency to leave like a white residue until we wipe it off. So you really just kind of have to guess and based on experience and it takes practice. Like I know what I'm doing, so I, I don't. <laughs> so if you're watching me, you think, oh man, he knows what he's doing. I have no clue what I'm doing. I just like to do stuff. going to be somewhat subtle. But it will show up. Now, if you want to make it more drastic and more in your face, then obviously you, you add a little bit more paint. And then I can come back and blend it with the same color if it's a little too stark. Or I can come back with this darker color and touch up. It's gonna be a little bit more difficult if I come back and touch up with the darker color because, uh, you know, obviously I don't wanna, I've got areas masked off that are gonna be the, the lighter gray. I don't have to have to be careful around those or remask or do something. Okay. Let that dry. All right, now I'm gonna use this piece as kind of like a test piece before I strip all the salt off just to see if it's where I want it, if it's too much, if it's not enough. So I'm just gonna take some of the same soapy water that I had before 
And I'm gonna wet this, get this off, and just see what we got. All right, I'm not sure that. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's giving me a little bit of a difference. I think that's pretty subtle. I may have to come in and touch it up. Looks like it's leaving. Yeah, yeah, that looks pretty good actually. And it's fully dry as well. Come back and look at it, see what we got. Make sure I got all the salt residue off of there, but here we go. I think I, I think we'll be good with that. That it's giving me just a little hint of some some weathering, and I may come back with some of the darker and uh, and do some more shading with 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 that with the darker gray. So now I can do the rest of the plane. All right, so let's take a look at what we've accomplished. I'm going to close out the video. Uh, I will get, I'm going to go ahead and put a clear coat on it, and then we'll do decals in the next video and uh, do some more weathering and then finish this puppy up hopefully pretty soon. But uh, I really like the way this is turning out. And as you can see in the pictures, I, after I did the salt technique, I went ahead and I masked off a couple of panels. There's one over here. Um, this one right here and I sprayed those with the same 36118 and then uh, I also sprayed a couple a little bit lighter like this one right here and then uh, the flap here just just to make it a little more interesting but I think it's gonna look pretty cool I really like that salt technique it is kind of a pain in the butt I had to go back a couple times um, where I had some salt water that uh, once it dried, it, it uh, showed its ugly head, and I had to had to uh, wipe it off again a couple times. So it, it is a bit of a pain, but it does give you a really cool result. I really like the way that looks. So uh, there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and close this out. Oh, I also painted painted the uh, yellow and red instead of using the Tamiya decal. Now I am gonna use Tamiya decals. I hate decals, and I especially hate Tamiya decals, but. I don't have any other ones and I don't really feel like masking and painting um, all those, uh, all the letters and stuff. So we're just gonna use the, the ones that come with the kit, see how that works out. But uh, there we go. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, hope you learned something and uh, I will catch you on the next episode. Thanks for watching, fellas.